Very often, a lot of people depend on media for various reports on health matters. Uh, there's a problem with that because unless you know the nature of how studies are conducted, various reports about things related to health, let's say, reported in the popular press, can be misinterpreted by the public. And uh, as an example of this, <clears throat> I, uh, I saw this press release just the other day, which would be of intense interest to anybody who follows low carbohydrate or ketogenic diets. So I thought what I'd do in this video is just read you directly from this press report and, and offer my comments as to how to properly interpret this information. So here, here it is. I'm just reading right off the press release. Keto, Palo, Paleo, Atkins. There's no shortage of low-carb diets to try. But new research suggests that over time, living low-carb can raise your risk of a heart condition called atrial fibrillation or AFib. <clears throat> Uh, now, what is atrial fibrillation? Uh, it says so. Talks about this later in this press release, but I'll tell you what it is. The uh, atrium are the uh, are the upper two chambers of the heart, uh, and uh, what happens is very often uh, in older people could be caused by long-standing high blood pressure. There's a number of causes. It's also common in people that who exercise. Also, uh, they get this uh, abnormal uh, conduction or heart rhythm disturbance in the upper chambers of the heart or the atrium. The usual treatment of this is uh, certain type. Uh, they can give you drugs that help to modify the heart rhythm, or in other cases, they'll uh, give you blood thinning drugs, <clears throat> because the danger of atrial fibrillation is that you can throw a clot into your blood, <clears throat> which can travel to your brain and cause a stroke. In fact, the major complication of atrial fibrillation is strokes. So most of the people that have atrial fibrill fibrillation are on blood thinning drugs like. Coumadin or warfarin, that type of thing. Anyway, getting back to this press release, people who regularly got fewer than 45% of their calories from carbohydrates were 18% more likely to develop AFib than people who ate a moderate amount of carbohydrates, such as 45 to 52% of their calories. Uh, by the way, 45% uh, of calories is not, in any sense of the word, a low carbohydrate diet. So that's one thing wrong right off the bat. The Chinese researchers said that the risk of AFib raised no matter what types of protein or fat we use to replace carbohydrates. Uh, extremes of anything aren't bad. Too much carbohydrate is bad and too little is also bad, explained Dr. Lawrence Epstein, a uh, director of electrophysiology, blah, blah, blah. Epstein wasn't involved in the new study. Atrial fibrillation is a heart rhythm disturbance. Instead of the usual heartbeat, the heart sometimes quivers in, in people with AFib. Because the heart isn't pumping properly, blood pools in the heart and can form clots. If a blood clot breaks freely, it, it can reach the brain and cause a stroke, according to the American Heart Association. Although the current study was only designed to find an association and not cause and effect relationship. Now, that is an important point. This was only an association. There was no, very important point, there was no cause and effect relationship shown between a low carbohydrate diet. And the, and the appearance of atrial fibrillation. Remember the scientific principle, correlation does not prove causation. Just cause something that, ha something that seemed to happen in sequence does not mean that it was the cause. <clears throat> uh, if, I, uh, if I eat an apple and start coughing, the coughing might have nothing to do with the apple, but some, might, some people might say, well, it was the apple that caused the coughing. That could only be true if everybody who ate apples started coughing. So, again, correlation does not prove causation. That's the first problem with this study. Uh, he said that one-way low carbs could, could cause such fast, late, fast weight losses by flushing fluids out of the body, and dehydration could cause AFib. Uh, I, I, I will note that low-carbohydrate diets do have a diuretic effect mostly caused by the breakdown of glycogen or carbohydrates stored in the liver and muscles. Each gram of, gl of uh, glycogen is stored with 2.7 grams of water. So when you embark on a low-carbohydrate diet, you are going to break down glycogen over a period of 12 to uh, 24 hours. And uh, when as the gly glycogen is broken down to provide glucose, uh, the water contained with each gram of glycogen is going to be released. This is a diuretic effect. Uh, the odds of causing dehydration are just about zero. 
Uh, it's uh, never happened as far as I know on people who follow low carbohydrate diets. So this guy's off the wall by talking about how can, how uh, the, the uh, extent of dehydration caused by low carb diet can cause atrial fibrillation, utter and complete nonsense. Uh, low carb diets can also cause electrolyte um, abnormalities, which can affect heart rhythm. It's true that the, along with the diuretic effect produced by low carb or ketogenic diets, along with that fluid loss, you do lose certain minerals, sodium, uh, you lose some potassium, you lose magnesium. In and, and a, and a uh, worst case scenario, these can cause heart rhythm disturbances because they're involved in the electrical conduction system of the heart. So <clears throat> the solution is simple just replace the minerals. Supplement some potassium, supplement some magnesium, and even on low on ketogenic diets, you need to ingest uh, at least probably about two 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 thousand five hundred to up to four grams of sodium a day. If you do so, you will prevent any mineral-based electrolyte disturbance. So again, we, we can rule out that problem too. Uh, the research pointed out that people eating low carbohydrate diets also tend to eat few, fewer vegetables, such as fruits and grains. Uh, foods linked to lower levels of inflammation. People on low-carb diets may experience more inflammation, which has been linked to e uh, e fat, uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. Uh, again, there's some truth to that. On the extreme low-carbohydrate diets, such as ketogenic diets, which allow no more than maybe 20 to a maximum of 50 grams of carbohydrate a day, it doesn't leave a lot, a lot of room to eat, uh, uh, let's say, high-fiber foods, such as uh, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Okay, what you do there, very simple. Again, the solution, use a, use a fiber supplement. I take fiber supplements myself. Uh, I do eat some fruits and vegetables, but I don't eat enough to get the daily requirement of fiber. So I, I supplement my diet with psyllium powder, probably a little a apple pectin, uh, and a little bit of a guar gum. Uh, this alone allows me to, to add as much as 40 grams of extra fiber to my diet. The actual requirement for fiber is only about 30 grams a day. The average person only gets 12 grams a day of fiber, whether they're on a low-carb diet or a regular diet, because most people don't eat the required amounts of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, which are the main sources of fiber in the diet. So it makes no difference whether you're on a low-carb diet or not. Most people are not eating enough of the foods that contain fiber anyway. So and what this guy is saying is all these people, because of, of the inflammation, uh, systemic inflammation in the body caused by a lack of fiber, He's basically saying all these people are going to have atrial fibrillation, and we know that's simply not true. That's BS. Again, a, a, a mistake on this uh, popularly produced uh, news report. Nonsense. Uh, Epstein said the reason someone is on a low-carb diet may matter too. If you're diabetic and trying to control your blood sugar, you may not be on a very low-carb diet. You may be on a very low-carb diet. Diabetes is a risk factor for AFib. Again, one has nothing to do with the other. Diabetes might be a risk factor for atrial fibrillation. It has nothing to do with a low-carbohydrate diet. In point of fact, some recent studies show that following a low-carbohydrate diet or a ketogenic diet actually has shown to be a cure for type 2 diabetes. It will not cause uh, atrial fibrillation. In fact, the, by lowering blood triglycerides, which is a common effect of every type of low-carbohydrate diet, you decrease your chances of any type of atrial fibrillation. Again, another, still another mistake in this uh, this this crappy uh, press release. Um, for the study, researchers reviewed data from a U.S. National Institute of Health study that included 14,000 people. At the start of the study, none of them had AFib. Uh, on the average of 22 years of follow-up, about 1,900 participants developed the heart rhythm disorder. And let's just say 1,900 people. Uh, was, uh, out of 14,000 who started on a low-carbohydrate diet uh, uh, over a period of 22 years develop atrial fibrillation. Now, there's a lot of other things that can cause atrial fibrillation besides low-carbohydrate diets, especially over a period of 22 years. As I said, uh, uh, untreated, long-standing hypertension or high blood pressure uh, and hypertension or high blood pressure is so common in many people as they get older that I would suspect that uh, uh, just about at least 90% of these 1,900 people probably developed gradual hypertension as they got older. And uh, that could probably explain their atrial fibrillation. Still another error of this press release. All of the study participants filled out detailed diet uh, surveys. Researchers divided into three groups, low, low moderate, and high carbohydrate. 
The low carbohydrate group got fewer than 45% of the daily calories of carbs. As I said, 45% of your daily calories of carbs is not in any shape, way, shape, or form like a low carbohydrate diet. Why they call it that, I don't know. Moderate uh, carbohydrate consume 45 and 50% of calories from carbs. 52% of calories is a, is a high carbohydrate diet. Half your calories are coming from carbo carbohydrate, and this idiot calls it a, a moderate carbohydrate diet. That's absurd. <clears throat> uh, the high carb group included people who got more than 52% of their calories from carbs. The researchers said their findings complement other studies suggesting that both low and high carbohydrate diets are linked with a higher risk of premature diet. So they're saying both low and high carb diets are linked with a premature uh, risk of premature death. So that leaves you uh, with what? Drinking water. If you're not going to have low carbs, they're going to have high carbs. Then what are you going to eat? I mean, just ridiculous. I, I mean, it's amazing. This is the kind of stuff that confuses and, and it makes people scratch their heads in bewilderment. Uh, what is it? There, there are many iterations of low carb diets. Some people don't eat a lot of bread, pasta, desserts. That's good. Sometimes fad diets eliminate healthy foods like vegetables, fruits, and, and legumes. You should, you, and you don't get enough nutrients, fiber. I already talked about that. Everybody needs a more balanced dietary uh, pattern that includes fruits, non-starchy vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. I will agree with that. However, the truth is that uh, low carbohydrates, uh, I'm sorry, low carb diets usually come in stages. Very often, you start out with an extreme low carbohydrate diet, such as a ketogenic diet. Again, very few carbohydrates, doesn't allow much room for fiber intake. But then after about, let's say, six weeks, you move on to a lower carbohydrate diet, not a ketogenic diet. This can allow anywhere from 50 to 100 grams, up to 150 grams of carbohydrate, which does allow you to eat a good amount of fiber foods, including these foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains. You can eat them and still be on a low-carbohydrate diet. You just don't want to eat refined carbohydrates, which is like high-sugar foods, foods that uh, don't have any fiber, those things are always forbidden on any type of uh, low-carbohydrate diet because they kick out way too much insulin and they tend to produce body fat or maintain body fat. Uh, and then, uh, here we go. A more plant-based diet decreases the risk of many diseases, she added. Again, you know, she's advocating a vegetarian diet. There is some evidence that a vegetarian diet is good for your heart, but the truth is a vegetarian diet that's not balanced is as bad as any type of diet. Uh, if you're on a vegetarian diet, you have to be aware of certain nutrients that you're not going to get that are not common in typical vegetarian eating patterns. This includes iron. This includes uh, omega-3 fatty acids, the active forms such as EPA, DHA. It includes uh, vitamin B12, calcium, uh, and other uh, other uh, nutrients. Uh, if you follow a, a, a vegetarian diet that doesn't include nutrients, uh, you uh, you're, you're not getting a healthy diet, and it, and it definitely will not. Uh, prevent chronic disease. Uh, and by the way, recent studies show that contrary to what uh, the vegetarian advocates say, ve vegetarians do not live any longer than uh, people that are carnivores or people who eat meat. Uh, and I'm not advocating eating meat. Uh, personally, myself, because of ethical reasons, I prefer to minimize meat eating. I eat very little meat myself. I don't eat any red, red meat, but that's not for health reasons. It's for ethical reasons. I simply don't like to eat animals. I don't eat any pig products, pork, none of that stuff. Uh, the research has noted that more research is needed. Yeah, I'd say more research is needed because this is an idiotic epidemi epidemiological study where, there's, where, again, correlation does not prove causation. They're jumping to the gun. There's so many other. Uh, this was presented at an American Heart so Cardiology meeting. Uh, it's a bunch of crap, in my opinion. But I, I read this uh, press release to illustrate the bad information that's being uh, put on the internet relating to health. Somebody reading this who's considering a lower carbohydrate diet might panic when they see that it's uh, supposedly, uh, you know, related to the onset of atrial fibrillation, which I, I as I said. Is a major cause of strokes, but the uh, the, uh, the this uh, this study is uh, had showed absolutely no direct cause and effect evidence that a low carbohydrate or even a ketogenic diet will cause atrial fibrillation. And the existing other studies show that such diets are, if anything, beneficial for cardiovascular health. So the point to be taken from all this is be careful what you read in these medic in these. Uh, these, uh, you know, these press releases that are given to the public, uh, they're, they're, most of them are nonsense, uh, especially the epidemiological studies where they look at a large group of people 
and they kind of draw conclusions based without showing any direct causation. Uh, uh, you know, the way science works is to show something that's true, you have to show cause and effect. You have to show this causes that. If you can't do that, if you just point to a bunch of people and say, well, these people ate low-carb diets, they have atrial fibrillation, so low-carb diets cause atrial fibrillation, that's bad science. That's not science at all. That kind of stuff should be completely ignored. So that's about it for this su subject. Uh, this is, as you can tell, it's kind of a, per per a personal peeve of mine because I see this crap every day on the Internet, and it just drives me crazy because people that aren't familiar with the science behind all this stuff can accept this and you know it can cause a lot of problems for people but if you want the truth I would suggest you subscribe to my applied metabolics newsletter where you won't co you won't come across this kind of crap everything's evidence based based on my 57 years of constant study and empirical experience uh, uh, it's 40 to 50 pages every month I cover subjects such as nutrition exercise science supplements ergogenic aids anti-aging research fat loss techniques that work uh, exercise science, I think I said, women's health and fitness, hormonal therapy, uh, the best diets, the diets that really work. Uh, all of this is contained every month in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you subscribe to my newsletter, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook book group, where each month I uh, post, I mean each day, I post new information accurate information, not this junk, accurate information about uh, about nutrition, exercise science, and uh, general health and medicine. Uh, and uh, I, I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics, Facebook, uh, Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers, current subscribers only, could send me short questions. I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, I also answer questions on my private Facebook uh, group. I don't answer unsolicited questions. I don't answer questions submitted to me by non-subscribers. You're welcome to leave comments after this, uh, under this video, I should say. Uh, I can't guarantee I will answer them. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't, but I will always answer questions submitted by current subscribers to my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Dogs are truth. Dogs aren't like this crappy study. They're 100% truth, 100% loyalty, and by far, they unconditional love. The, 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 uh, dogs provide the most, the greatest degree of love. I know this from having several dogs in my life. The only one who will love you just as much or more is your mother. In some cases, that doesn't hold true. Somet sometimes mothers don't love their children. Dogs always love their people. Take care.